Hey, this is Steve Jolly with the Home Buying Skills Channel. And on today's show, we're gonna talk about should you buy a home now or wait till 2023? Are you ready to get started? Let's get to business. Well, the first thing I wanna do is share the decision process that I would use myself and that I share with my clients to help them decide when is the right time for them to make their move. Now, I don't always have people move. I help them decide what's best for them and what is best for their family. And then I'm gonna walk you through a real life scenario where I show you how to make the decision based on some factors we talk about. And if you have questions about your particular situation, you can always leave a comment, ask me a question, I'll be sure to respond to it, or you can always reach out and contact me. So the first question we're gonna to have to help you decide whether you wanna buy a home now or whether you wanna wait till 2023 is are you ready, are you financially ready to buy the home? The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is check, do you have a pre-approval letter where an underwriter has checked your conditions, has checked your statements, has reviewed all the documents and information that you've provided to them and then given you a pre-approval? That is the strongest pre-approval you can have, and that's the one I recommend you get in any type of market, because that's gonna show the seller you are ready, willing, and able to buy a home. Then once you have that special pre-approval letter where the underwriter has checked everything out, then you're gonna to wanna to get a loan estimate based on a certain price point that you're targeting out there on the market. So if you're looking for a $500,000 home, you need to get a loan estimate based on buying a home approximately $500,000. Most important line item in that loan estimate is the estimated cash on hand to close. That's the amount of cash you'll need in your bank account on closing day in order to move into this home. Now that answers the first question, are you financially ready to buy a home? So let's ask you the second question, how long do you plan to live in the home? Because if you only plan to live in the home a year or two, it's probably not a great idea to buy a home You'll probably be better off renting for that year or two. They'll give you more flexibility when it comes time to move. If you're financially ready to move and you plan on living in the home three or more years, this is what you need to know about the R word, yes, recession. People are talking about it a lot in the news now. People are expecting us to be in one soon. But here's what you need to know about recession and the housing market and what history tells us about how they work together or how they don't work together. So let's take a look. So I went back and looked at the last six recessions going all the way back to the 1970s. And here's what I discovered. Now those recessions were pretty tough. We had the energy crisis. We had the savings and loan crisis. We had the dot-com bust. We had 9-11. And then we had the Great Recession. And then we had the pandemic. In five of those six recessions, the market either grew or remained flat during those recessions. And only one recession did prices recline, and that was the Great Recession. And that was huge, that was something very unique. It's something that happens probably only once in a lifetime to have a financial meltdown like that, a worldwide collapse of the financial markets is very unusual. We don't expect that again now, so we don't expect prices to drop anytime soon. That's the good news. If you're worried about prices dropping and wanna jump in when they do, I don't expect them to, and most experts don't either. So if you want to get in at the lowest price possible, I'm saying time is on your side. Get in there as soon as you can. And one last thing, don't let the uncertainty about the economy scare you. Let their history show you that five out of six times, going all the way back to the 70s, we did well or we did okay with home prices. Don't let the news, the media, and the threat of recession scare you into not buying a home, if that's what you really want to do. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about wealth creation because wealth creation also goes into this. The longer that you own a home, the more property appreciation you're going to get. And what, what's really magical about that is the more wealth creation you're going to get. What we've learned going back and studying is we've learned that the average homeowner has 40 times the wealth of the average renter. And 70% of that wealth can be tied directly to the property they own. So wealth creation and real estate are tied directly together, especially in the United States. So if you want to create wealth, if you want to create a legacy for your family going forward, buy real estate and hold it as long as possible. Just remember, you need to be in the market to win. 
And look what's happened after the pandemic. Home prices have increased 50% since April of 2020. Don't be afraid of the market. Don't be afraid of the recession. Buy now and create that wealth and create that legacy for your family. Another thing I want to share with you is about the Federal Reserve. Now, the Federal Reserve uses interest rates to either stimulate the economy or slow down the economy. And one of the biggest things tied to interest rates are home loans. And home loans and really the housing industry is 20% of our national GDP. So it's huge. And it's a really important tool for the Fed to be able to turn it on to stimulate the economy or slow it down to slow down the economy and slow down that inflationary pressure. So that's what the Fed is doing by raising rates. They're trying to slow down the economy, slow down the home purchases. What will probably happen is, because I believe, personally I believe, they've waited too long to make corrections, and then now they're overcorrecting. So I believe they will cause us to have a short recession, but that's okay. Remember what we learned about a recession just a few minutes ago. So I believe we'll have a short recession, and that's when we'll expect interest rates to come back down because they'll want to stimulate the economy again, so they'll start lowering interest rates in order to do that. And if you decide to buy a home now, that's going to be the time that you're going to want to refinance. Now let's look at a real life and example. So let's say you have a pre-approval for $400,000 and that pre-approval is based on 10% down. So you get your loan estimate from your lender and it says your estimated cash on hand to close is about $48,950. Now that's just a number I made up, but that's probably close to what it would be in that situation. So the 40,000 is your 10% down and the $8,950 are the closing costs that you're gonna pay in order to close that transaction. And if that is a good monthly payment for you, then let's dive in to see what that means for us. So let's also assume in this scenario that you have $50,000 in the bank, that you plan on living in a home for three or more years. And in that situation, if you have enough money to close, you have a, a pre-approval that's been underwritten, um, and then you plan on living in the home for a long enough period of time, I would say yes, that's a good idea to go ahead and purchase a home, um, but still that decision is ultimately up to you. So that's how I would walk somebody through that decision-making process. You know, are they ready to buy? Are they gonna stay in the home long enough? And then if they are, here's what we've got to do to make all that happen. So let's say you decide to move forward and you bought it at today's interest rates, which are higher than what you'd like to pay. So here's what you need to do. After you purchase the home today, you need to keep an eye on rates every day or almost every day going forward because rates change on a daily basis. And as they start dropping, you need to keep an even closer eye on them. And when they get down to about a 1% drop from where you are, I would reach out to your lender, have them generate a new loan estimate for you based on refinancing your home and see if it's worth it to you to do the extra closing costs are going to get a decent enough payoff time for you. And what I mean by that is if the additional closing costs, if the savings you're going to have, it's going to take more than two or three years to pay off those closing costs, then you probably don't have enough savings yet to really justify it. You want to be two or three years or less in order to really justify paying those extra closing costs to bring your rate down. So just keep an eye on the rates if you decide to move forward today. When they drop, reach out to your lender, talk to him about refinancing, and even ask him when the rates hit a certain point, because he could do that ahead of time. Say, hey, when the rates hit a certain point, you call me and I'll do an application today. That's how you're prepared to buy a home today and take advantage of the rates that are coming in the near future the next time the economy slows down a little bit. I hope you enjoyed today's video on home buying. If you liked the video, click the like button to let me know that you enjoyed it. If you have any specific questions, leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll never miss one of our videos. Take care.